take thy knife, Chip, and shatter. Doom Part 2 hits the big screen with breathtaking desert landscapes, packed stadiums in a colorless world, and enough technical wizardry to make your head spin. Denis Villeneuve hasn't held back with this sequel. Now, if you missed the first film, don't worry. This one's got a script that'll grab you faster than a sandworm on the hunt. Villeneuve and John Spates cooked up a story that's as engrossing as it is fast-paced, pulling you into the epic of Paul Atreides, played by Timothy Chalamet, and his desert adventures. So here's the story. Paul is still reeling from the loss of his dad, Duke Leto Atreides, played by Oscar Isaac. He's out in the sands with his mom, Jessica, played by Rebecca Ferguson, trying to navigate this whole messiah thing. Jessica's all about the prophecy stuff, thinking Paul's the chosen one and all that jazz. But Paul? Well, he's not too keen on the idea of being the savior of the desert. He's more focused on revenge for his old man's death. Revenge is not the same thing as justice. But when duty calls, even if it's wrapped up in a prophecy, Paul's gotta answer. And let me tell you, his journey is one heck of a roller coaster. Denis Villeneuve really poured his heart and soul into bringing Dune to the big screen. It's like he's been preparing for this moment since he was doodling storyboards as a teenager. And now, here we are witnessing his vision unfold in all its epic glory. I can only imagine the pressure he must have felt tackling such a beloved and complex story. But judging by reviews, he knocked it out of the park. I mean, when people start comparing your movie to Lawrence of Arabia, you know you've done something right. But even with all the praise, it sounds like Villeneuve isn't resting on his laurels. He's already thinking about the next installment and how he can continue to push the boundaries of storytelling. Now, that's called dedication. Dune 2 is a star-studded sequel with some fresh faces joining the mix. From Austin Butler's sociopathic nephew to Florence Pugh's bristling princess, there is no shortage of talent on display. And let's not forget about Tim Blake Nelson's mysterious role. But it's not just about the newbies stealing the show. Rebecca Ferguson's witchy antics and Javier Bardem's Fremen leadership adds layers to the story. The performances are top-notch, especially with Rebecca Ferguson and Javier Bardem bringing even more depth to their characters. Stellan Starsguard's Baron Harkonnen and his menacing nephews in action is no less than a visual treat. And Christopher Walken as the Emperor, that's just legendary. Also, new characters like Fade Rutha and Princess Erlon added depth to the story. And Timothy Chalamet and Zendaya really hit a home run in Doom Part 2. They trained with a Kali instructor for their epic showdown scene. And building a real friendship before playing love interest on screen. That's some solid method acting right there. And I totally get what Zendaya means about the love story being earned. You can't just have characters falling for each other willy-nilly. Especially not in the middle of all the sci-fi chaos. Plus, they both gave it their all and knocked it out of the park. Their chemistry on screen and off screen is something else. Furthermore, Timothy Chalamet really stepped up his game for Dune Part 2. Denis Villeneuve was singing his praises, saying Timothy was like the poster child for discipline on set. I can just imagine him showing up bright and early, ready to tackle whatever crazy sandworms or space battles they threw at him. In the first movie, he was like a wide-eyed kid thrust into a sandstorm. But now, in Part 2, he's all grown up and taking charge. You can practically feel his emotions jumping off the screen as they go through this crazy journey of becoming a leader and uh, all that jazz. Paul's character transformation was crazy, from heir to House Atreides to leader of the Fremen. But it's not all sunshine and spice, there's some really heavy stuff going down, with betrayal and heartbreak thrown into the mix. Also, Austin Butler takes on the role of vengeful warlord Fade Rutha and he definitely brings the chill factor. Butler nails it with his icy stare and intense vibe. Say goodbye to his Disney days and rom-com roles because he's here to show us a whole new side. Denis Villeneuve even compared his character to a mix of a psycho killer and Mick Jagger as if there's even a distinction between the two. Butler didn't take his role lightly. He saw it as a chance to step up his game and dive into something completely different. And working alongside big names like Christopher Walken and Timothy Chalamet must have been a blast. Fade Rutha himself is a member of House Harkonnen and not exactly on Paul Atreides' holiday card list. Butler captures all the rage and complexity of his character with style. Going from heartthrob roles to playing a serious villain isn't easy, but he pulls it off like a pro. It's like watching Heath Ledger become the Joker all over again. All in all, it's like Villeneuve took Herbert's masterpiece and gave it a little cinematic twist. Kind of like adding a pinch of spice to your favorite dish. But seriously, splitting the story into two parts was a smart move. It's like giving us more time to savor each moment instead of cramming it all into one movie. 
Plus, it gives us something to look forward to, like waiting for the next season of your favorite show. And there are differences between the book and the movie, but as long as they capture the essence of Dune, I'm all in. Moreover, Dune 2 is like the spicier, more action-packed sibling of the first movie. You've got sandworms the size of skyscrapers duking it out, Fremen warriors doing their ninja moves in the desert, and political scheming that would make even the most seasoned Game of Thrones fan sit up and take notice. It's like a roller coaster ride through the dunes with twists and turns that keep you on the edge of your seat. But it's not just about the eye candy, there's substance here too. Character development, juicier plot twists, and themes hit you harder than a sandworm in the face. And let's not forget about the ladies. Lady Jessica is kicking butt and taking names. Stilgar is as badass as ever. And even the creepy Baron Harkonnen gets a chance to shine. But Dune 2 doesn't leave you hanging like a sandworm on a hook. That'd be a pretty goddamn big hook. It wraps things up nicely while still leaving you hungry for more. It's like the perfect dessert after a feast. Satisfying, but still leaving you craving another helping. And it's definitely like Villeneuve said, let's make the sandworms the real stars of the show. Those sandworms aren't just your average creatures, they're like the rock stars of Arrakis. And everyone's clamoring to get a glimpse of them. Hats off to Tanya Lapointe and her team for making those scenes so epic. And let's talk about symbolism. These sandworms aren't just there to give people nightmares, they're like the guardians of Arrakis, the spice gods. The Fremen treat them with such reverence it's like they're worshipping at church. But there's some serious technical wizardry going on behind the scenes. Weeks of studying worm behavior, perfecting Fremen techniques and probably a fair amount of trial and error. All to give those heart-pounding, edge-of-your-seat moments where Paul Atreides takes the reins and rides into destiny. I was just sitting there in the theater, popcorn in hand, and being completely mesmerized by the jaw-dropping action scenes. It's like being transported to another world, except this time it's filled with sandworms and epic battles. I bet the people behind the scenes had a blast putting all those special effects together. Can you imagine the brainstorming sessions? Okay, how can we make these sandworms even scarier? I don't know why they all sound f weirdly French. More teeth? More slime? <laughs> And then there's the challenge of coordinating those massive battle scenes. It's like orchestrating a symphony of chaos. Isn't it incredible how cinematography can make a movie feel like a whole new world? Greg Frazier really knocked it out of the park with Dune Part 2. His work behind the camera, it's like magic. It transports you to Arrakis and makes you feel like you're right there in the middle of the action. Have you ever seen a desert look so mesmerizing? Frazier's use of color and lighting makes the sand dunes look like works of art. Frazier knows how to capture those quiet, intimate moments, too. The chemistry between Paul and Shani is so palpable, you can't help but root for them. And now, let's talk about the music. Hans Zimmer really outdid himself with a score of Dune 2. It's like he reached into the depths of Arrakis itself to find the perfect sounds to accompany Paul Atreides on his journey. And those themes he created. Paul's theme is like a musical roller coaster of emotions, just like his journey. Don't even get me started on the Fremen motifs. They're so mystical. They make me want to join their sage and ride sandworms into battle. Now, Doom Part 2 is totally crushing it, with a Rotten Tomatoes score of 98%. It's like the movie is rolling in success. Just make sure that's arrhythmically. It's not every day that you see a sequel outshine its predecessor. Especially when it comes to the Dune franchise. That's what we call in the biz, the Villeneuve effect. I can't help but chuckle at the thought of 1984 Dune adaptation sitting there with its 37% score. Sorry, David Lynch. And let's give a round of applause to the cast, especially Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya, and Florence Pugh. They must be feeling pretty good about themselves right now, knowing they're part of one of the highest rated sci-fi epics ever made. It's impressive how Dune Part 2 not only surpassed its predecessors, but also became Denis Villeneuve's shining star on Rotten Tomatoes. I bet he's feeling like the Sand Emperor of Hollywood right now. That's a thing. But seriously, with all the hype and praise surrounding Dune Part 2, I want to grab my popcorn and dive into the epic space opera again. With even more action, stunning visuals, and an intense storyline, this sequel promises to be bigger, bolder, and yes, even better than the first. That's a wrap for today. Before you go, do me a solid and smash that subscribe button and flick on the notification bell. By the way, a little birdie told me Denis Villeneuve's planning to wrap up the Doom movies after the third one. Crazy, right? Share your thoughts on whether you're up for more movies in the Dooniverse. I'm totally game.
Drop your opinions in the comment section below. See you next time.